Despite having three years at a photo school, learning all the technical aspects of, of the craft, I was stuck in the pursuit of the perfect shot, constantly comparing my photographs to others and ultimately losing the joy of photography. All of this could have been avoided if I'd just been told a few things at photo school. As it has it, in 1993, I stepped through the doors of Pretoria Tech Photo School, full of hopes and dreams about becoming a professional photographer. And over those three years, they taught us so much about the technical aspects of photography, about the history of photography, and I am forever in their debt for planting that passion, that seed of, of, of wonder about photography within me. But there was also an element of photography that I wish that we'd addressed because it ultimately would have made me a far more happier and, and contented photographer. Do you remember that first time that you held a camera in your hands? The excitement of, of capturing that moment, the anticipation of, of seeing the final image. If they're anything like mine, those first photographs were <laughs> probably not perfect, but they were mine, and because of that, they were special. This is the mindset that I had when I went to, to photo school. And that kind of changed within the first few weeks because we were being taught technical aspects, and for want of a better word, being taught to strive for perfection, to get that perfect shot. And here's where the problem began for me with photography. This pursuit of perfection started to lead me to seek validation. And I was started to make photographs to please others and not for myself. I don't know if you've ever felt this, that you look at a picture, look at a scene, and then you say, hang on, no, I'm gonna shoot something else because that will be something that other people would, would like better. It was only much later, years later, that it dawned on me, of course, that perfection is subjective. You know, what one person considers to be perfect, another might not. At photo school, each lecturer liked different things, so we would change the way that we photographed to suit that particular assignment being given by that lecturer. Of course, this reinforces this idea that perfection is actually it's, it's like, like a mirage. It, it's always, it's just there on the horizon, and as soon as you get close to it, it disappears. In your own photography, next time you're out taking pictures, just do the simple idea of, of simply photographing the things that you find interesting. Not what the other with the, you know, the photo schools or the, the camera clubs or the, the little groups that you're in think are worthy things. Find something that resonates with you. But there's something else that is equally problematic with perfection, and that is that it stifles creativity. When I was so focused on, on capturing that perfect shot to impress somebody, I wouldn't be looking for things that I wanted to photograph or experimenting with ideas. I was simply looking to try and replicate things that they felt were perfect. So my creativity wasn't being exercised because I was simply just kind of making copies. I would challenge you, as I did myself, to take imperfect shots, not technically higgledy-piggledy shots, but images that other people would kind of go, well, they're not, they're not right, so they are imperfect. See what you discover. See what happens when you play around on the edges of just whatever, you know, that experimentation. There was something else that went along with that, that idea of, of seeking validation, and that is the, the trap of comparison. I was there looking at all the work of a fellow student, and I started to feel inadequate because in my head, my images weren't measuring up. But this is what I discovered years too late, is that comparison is not just about feeling inadequate, it also 
in my case, it robbed my creativity, much like that seeking of perfection did, because I was, I was, I feel like I can't try something out. And because of all these things, it ultimately robbed me of the joy of photography. I was excited when I started photo school to be a photographer, this is gonna be sort of great. But over time, I, it, it morphed into, oh, well, I think photography is all very serious, it's very earnest that it didn't feel like it was fun anymore. I don't know if you've ever felt this way. And, and of course, if, if you have, then hopefully it's comfort that you are not alone. I was trying to replicate other people's styles or trying to, to measure up. I'd lost sight of my own unique voice, my own perspective of, of the way that I photograph things. and. That was stopping me taking those risks I talked about, of trying out new things. We had everything at our disposal to try as a technical thing, you know, the, the cameras and the, the, the chemistry, everything we really wanted, the knowledge. And yet, I was worried about stepping out of that little comfort zone because I was surrounded day in, day out by the work of everybody else. And over time, that work homogenized into looking very similar. I wasn't able at the time to, <laughs> to not be surrounded by these images because obviously we were at photo school. But nowadays we have the ability to do that. Well, of course we can just lock ourselves. We don't look at work. See what happens when you spend a week or so not looking at any other photographer's work not looking at pictures, what have you, just focusing on your own inner vision. And being surrounded by all those photographs day in, day out, was leading me to this, this, this feeling of self-doubt. I lost my confidence completely because I was constantly comparing my work to others. And, you know, what I'd lost sight of, and it was only with the benefit of hindsight, that of course photography is a journey. And the way that we approach our journey is unique to us. It was that revelation, you know, the idea that photography is a journey and not a destination, that really helped me turn a corner with my own images. And, and that was only something that came through the benefit of hindsight. Way back in those early days at photo school, I was at the beginning of my career as a photographer, that I thought that there was a point you got to and then that was it, you know, that you were kind of like, okay, I'm now a photographer. That I wasn't aware that it's an ongoing process. I never took the time to recognize even the small incremental changes in my photography, the way that I felt that it was improving. I never celebrated that. All I did was berate myself when I didn't do work that other people thought was amazing. It's, it's that shift in perspective which ultimately freed me of that trap of, of comparison. And it opened up a new world of, of creativity for me. And I'd like for you to try and set some, some personal goals in your own photography to celebrate the little wins, not beating yourself up the whole time. There are going to be, there's gonna be ups, there's gonna be downs, but this is, this is part of the journey of photography. And of course, every photographer's journey is different. We all have different starting points, different paths, different destinations, even though I said photography is not a destination, but we're working towards different things. I'd sat there in that dark room at photo school comparing my journey to somebody else's, which of course is like comparing apples to oranges. It's only now, 30 years later, that I realize the journey itself is the reward. The joy of learning, of experimenting, of growing as a photographer is more rewarding than, you know, getting a top mark on, a, <laughs> on an assignment. Take a moment, reflect on your journey so far. What have you learned? What are you most proud of? There was, however, one thing that photo school did offer, but I was too pig-headed to actually realize it at the time.
But how do you measure your improvement as a photographer? How do you know if you're actually getting better? That's where I was again, pig-headed, silly as a, as a student, is that we were at, at critique sessions. You know, people would put up the work and lecturers would tell you, and they said, look, you could try this, you could try that, do different things. But I was all like, no, I don't want to hear this. And maybe you've kind of recognized that voice in either yourself or some other people who, when they ask for advice or some feedback, don't want to hear it. Whatever gets suggested, they'll find an excuse as to why the thing that's been pointed out should actually be there. Now, a lot of this I feel comes from people are, especially these days, getting advice that's been given to them that's not necessarily helpful. So we have to find someone who can provide objective, constructive feedback that isn't validation of our own ideas. Not somebody who's going to blow smoke up your backside, that kind of thing. This might be a mentor, it could be a fellow photographer whose opinions you really admire, or you might be lucky enough to have a very supportive photography club that you're a member of. Think around, can you think of somebody who you know, could help you, who could offer their services as a, a sounding board to give you that feedback? That feedback that we were being given at photo school was a gift. It was that opportunity to learn, to grow, to, to, to improve. So I should have sought it out, continued to listen to it, not pull back from it, not say, well, la, 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 I don't want to know, because it, it, was, it felt like it was a, a, a way of people saying my work wasn't good enough. So the next time you receive, again, constructive feedback, See it as an opportunity to learn, to grow. But of course, how do we know if that feedback is, is, is useful? Because of course, not all criticism is, is equal. So think about the source of the feedback. Is it trying to make your work like somebody else's? Or is it giving you the, the push in the direction where you feel your work wants to go? A big mistake that a lot of people make when asking for feedback is they're not looking for specific feedback. They, they, they want things like, do you like this picture? You know, how is this capture? Oh, what's that? I hate that word, capture. Right? It feels like you've gone off and caught something, put it in a box. That, that kind of question just leads to these kind of vague responses like, oh, it's a good job, it needs improvement. Ask specific things in your photography. Say things like, I have, made this picture quite contrasty. How do you feel about the contrast? Is it too much? Is it too little? Be specific in what you want that feedback to entail. That photographer who we met at the beginning of this video, the young 19 year old guy, full of you know excitement about photography, sort of lost his way a little bit. And the lessons that I should have been taught at photo school, sort of boiled down to three letters that make a very simple word. And that is joy. Joy in photography does so many things. It fuels creativity, first and foremost. If we're not happy with something, as we've seen, it's so hard to be creative. When I, when I started enjoying photography again, I started taking more risks. I thought about new ideas. I just started to think outside of the box. Joy is also contagious. When we're passionate about our photography, it shows in our images and that passion inspires other people. It makes your photographs have an authentic voice. This is the point. Your work stands out when it is full of your passion, your enthusiasm. Share your own joy with photography. I can't tell you how much sitting here sharing my love for photography with you has helped improve my own photography. Find an outlet for you to share your joy. The joy also of learning, experimenting. I'd, for ages when I lost that joy, I didn't want anything to know about photography. I just, I, I, I snuck away from it and I started to wither as a photographer. 
It was only when I started re-embracing that joy that I started making motions movement again on my own personal journey. The secret to becoming a great photographer is not about being perfect, about seeking validation. It's about embracing the journey, the feedback, finding that joy in photographs. If you want to find out more about a photographer who is chock full of the joy of photography, then check out this guy over here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.